The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the most ambitious game for the Nintendo Switch and has quickly become one of the most beloved games in the Zelda series. It features a world with thousands of secrets to find, items to collect, people to meet, and quests to complete. If you're as obsessed with Breath of the Wild speedrunning as I am, maybe you've seen a glitch where somebody waits on a campfire or reads a book and all of a sudden the camera yanks itself a thousand meters away and they end up in a nearby test of strength. No? Well, I'm here to tell you exactly what this is and how to do it. What's up gamers? My name is Orchrist and welcome to part one of my Shrine Coordinate Warp tutorial series. I am a Twitch streamer, Breath of the Wild speedrunner, and now content creator. Very original, I know. As a side note, this video will focus more on the science of the SCW and not so much on the how-to, so if you want to get to more of the tutorial aspect of this series, you can find a link to that video in the top right corner. Today I'm going to be teaching you about the Shrine Coordinate Warp, or SCW for short. It's a glitch you can use to enter any underground shrine without having to actually do the quests associated with making it appear. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the science of the SCW, what its uses for speedrunning are, its limitations, and I'm going to give an overview of the different methods for achieving the SCW. So first, we got to start off by saying that this glitch was discovered by a glitch hunter named Legend of Link. You can find him on Twitter, see all sorts of different crazy clips from Breath of the Wild. And what he discovered was that it was actually possible to store the elevator activation of one shrine and use that activation to enter a different shrine by landing within the load radius of that shrine's elevator. Now, this trick isn't as simple as it sounds. There's actually a complex set of rules that govern what activation storage you can use to get into what shrines. So first we have to start by talking about load radiuses. When it comes to shrines, they have an unload radius, or zone, in which the elevator will unload. The developers made it this way so that the game wouldn't be trying to process too many things at once and slow down performance. And for whatever reason, they made the unload radius of above-ground shrines and underground shrines different sizes. As a general rule of thumb, above-ground shrines have an unload radius of 64 meters, but underground shrines can have an unload radius from anywhere from a few hundred meters to over a thousand in some cases. So if the unload radius of one shrine overlaps with the coordinates of a nearby shrine, that means you can use the storage and activation of that elevator to enter those coordinates. If you want to explore all the possibilities for SCW, there's a link down below in the description that will take you to an object map, and all you have to do is go into the search function and type in entrance ELEV asterisk. From there the map will load the radiuses of each shrine so you can see what possibilities SCW has to offer. Okay, so what implications does this SCW trick have for speedrunning? If we're free to enter underground shrines that aren't really there, like Vulota or Rakazunzo, we can skip the entire Vomito and Vonda Boris quests, as well as some other longer shrines that take a lot of questing to do, such as Lachnaroki. It also has uses for the Extended All Shrines category, which includes the DLC shrines, and also All Dungeons Extended, which requires you to complete the DLC shrines in order to finish the Champion's Ballad. But despite its usefulness, SCW has its limitations, such as the setups for it can be a bit laborious and a bit difficult to pull off. And also, it's a difficult trick to pull off first try, especially when you're first learning. And also, SCWs aren't always viable in every situation. For example, it's theoretically possible to SCW into Tawajin or even Tide Island Korguchida. However, the load radiuses of Tawajin and Korguchida do not overlap with any nearby shrines, thus making the trick too difficult to pull off RTA. The good news is that SCW is a viable enough trick to eliminate nearly an hour off of all shrines and even more off of the all dungeons category. Now that we understand the science of SCW, you might be asking yourself, how do I get elevator storage? Well, there are a couple different main methods for doing this either the chest method or the chestless variety. Most people would agree that the chest method is easiest, but there are a couple of drawbacks of it. It's slower to set up and the execution can be a bit fussy, and the chestless method can be a lot harder and it can fail in a variety of ways. In part two of this tutorial, I will cover the chestless setup step by step with controls shown so that you can see exactly how the trick is performed, so that anyone can perform this trick, especially first try, which is what we always look for. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And if you want to follow me on Twitch, you can find me at twitch.tv backslash orchrist underscore gc. I do speedruns of Breath of the Wild every weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But until then, let's go fast, gamers.